Hello everyone, it is November 1st, 2022, it's Tuesday, it's Harp Tuesday, welcome to this week's episode. So today I'm just going to do a little episode on muffliness, a very specific type of muffle. I was inspired to do this because I have a student who's working on Pocket Bells Canon, and there's a section in there, in a lot of the arrangements, where, for example, left hand might be doing, uh, let's see, for example, from an F15810 to a G15810. And the problem is if you don't do any sort of muffling, there's two problems actually that arise. One is you can get a lot of lot of sound that keeps going right because again the strings will vibrate for a long time if they're not muffled and also there's a lot of risk of of buzzing right when we get to these big wire strings the bass strings in particular they can be vibrating quite a bit and so it becomes harder to sneak the fingers in between and avoid buzzing and play cleanly that's why of course open octaves are so essential and so often used on the lower register but what about when we're doing something that requires all the fingers, like this four, three, two, one, that, that fingering? Well, one option, of course, is to quickly switch into an open octave, which is possible. It's not ideal for speed. And there is another option, and that is to use the fourth finger to muffle the previously played note, the lower note, on the way to the note above it, sort of to swipe onto the next string. And that can be a really nice option because it's, it doesn't really slow you down. And again, if we're going like this, we can muffle the F. We can't really muffle the G then except with the back of the third finger. You can't really muffle the D very easily, but we can muffle the G on the way to the A in that specific instance. But let's say you're doing a bunch of 158s. To be able to muffle a lower string as you move to the string above it can be really, really useful. So it's a really handy tool to have in your toolbox. And the goal is to have it become automatic so the fingers start to do it without you actually even being aware that they're doing it. Somehow the brain and the fingers and the ear knows that, oh, this is a spot to better muffle, better muffle that previously played string on the way to the next one. So let's take a look at some slow motion footage to kind of see this in action. And here in this footage, I'm just starting from the C on a 15810 shape and moving my way up. And you can see how that fourth finger reaches out, stops that lowest note that it previously played, sort of as it, as it travels towards the note above it to play that one. So the goal is not to stop for very long, it's just to sort of swipe that one, but it's in such a way that it does completely stop that sound and is nice and clean. You also on this video then get a look at how, especially because it's that pattern, I'm not playing it super fast, how I'm not placing all four fingers at the beginning. I think I talked about this in one episode about how to handle that one, five, eight, 10 shape. And you can also see how the back of three, for example, the third finger is muffling its previously played note as well. The back of the finger is, is doing that to make it so that I don't have to worry about buzzing and also it also helps to add to a clean sound. But that's sort of beyond the scope of this video. Here, I wanna watch that fourth finger and see how it's stopping the string and moving to the next one in one smooth, easy motion. All right, so that slow motion footage gives you an idea of what it looks like. That sort of automatic muffle and slide onto the next string. But how do we achieve that? How does it start to become automatic for us? How do we practice it? How do we break it down? So what I'm gonna suggest is that you find either an octave or a 10th. I'm gonna practice this particular pattern from Pocket Bell's Canon, which is a 15810 shape. So I'm gonna find a 10th. 
I'm going to put the fourth finger on F, for example, a wire string, because they're harder, I think, than the gut strings to, to do this, and the thumb on the A. And I'm going to practice playing the F to get it ringing, vibrating, and then opening the hand, finger and hand out, turning the hand to face the strings a little bit more, so instead of pointing down to face the strings, and muffling. So this muffle is not a case of trying to place as if I'm going to play it again. Instead, it's kind of like an open octave, but these fingers are still tucked in. It's I'm not putting a lot of grip on this string. Now, I'm, I'm being careful not to do it too slowly. I have to firmly place, but with as little weight as I can, so that I can easily transition from that to somewhere else. You're looking for a good muffle sound, again, not to, not to have that sort of buzz, to try to have a nice clean muffle. So you're not having to push really hard, you're trying to use as little movement, as little effort as possible. And once you're happy with that, then to practice moving on to the G as part of that motion. So instead of finding the G like this, oh, there I buzzed, right? Instead of finding the G, we're finding the G, but on the way to the G, we're stopping the F. So it's part of the motion of finding the G is to swipe and stop this F from ringing. And so we don't have to play the G immediately because we're going to get a chance to kind of tweak our position a little bit with a thumb. But again, we go from this position to finding this G and then starting to turn into a normal position, play the thumb, and now here we are ready to play normally. So finding the G and then maybe this to arrive ready to play the next pattern. And then of course you could... If you're practicing, say, a 158 to practice that. But just that motion of open hand, muffle, but not stopping, right? So it's a muffle on the way to the next string. That sort of swipe or, or, or whatever, however whatever makes sense to you, whatever words make sense to you, but that gets you onto the next string, ready to play that. And that, in a sense, that's all there is to it. It just requires practice. So again, I think this, making sure you can get this sound that you're happy with, this muffle that you're happy with, and then that move on to the next string. And there you have it. The cannon will be sounding terrific in no time. Well, or maybe, maybe some time, but definitely will require some practice to get that automatic, but I think it's worthwhile because we encounter that so many times where we might like to muffle a previously played note on the way to the string above it in the bass. And the and same thing applies with the third finger. You can do that same principle. Or two is a little more awkward, I think, and often not quite as necessary, but with three it can be quite useful. So there you have it. Hope that was useful, and I will see you they are in two weeks time <laughs> cheers and so i just wanted to mention that in fact with these particular wire strings i find it much harder to get a nice muffle sound you can hear no matter how firmly i replace there's more of a you can really hear it there, right? There's more of a twang. So I guess if you're finding that that's the case for you, it it might be the technique that you're using. It might be that you can place more firmly and, and faster, but it also might be that the particular set of strings that you're using and the harp that you're using might be harder to get that really clean muffle that I can certainly get on my pedal harp. So just something to be aware of.